In the early 1600s, the American colonies were new. Life was hard. Education was not a priority for most. However, some colonists saw a need for education. They wanted their children to read the Bible. They also wanted them to be good citizens. The Massachusetts Bay Colony led the way. In 1642, they passed a law. It required parents to teach their children to read. This law was called the Old Deluder Satan Law. The colonists believed that ignorance was the devil's tool. Early schools focused on basic skills. Children learned to read, write, and do arithmetic. They also learned about the Bible and religious doctrine. These schools were often run by the church. They were not open to everyone. Only boys, and mostly wealthy boys, attended. Uh, as the colonies grew, so did the need for a different kind of education. Colonists were starting to think about independence. They needed citizens who understood their rights and responsibilities. The focus of education shifted. It moved away from religion. It moved towards civic duty. Leaders like Thomas Jefferson believed in an educated citizenry. They saw it as vital for a strong democracy. Jefferson proposed a system of public schools. He wanted them to be free and open to all. He believed that education should be a right, not a privilege. His ideas helped shape the future of American education. In the 1830s, a new movement emerged, the Common School Movement. This movement sought to create a system of free public schools for all children. Horace Mann was a leader of this movement. He believed that education was the key to social mobility and equality. Mann traveled the country advocating for public schools. He argued that education could help bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. He envisioned schools as places where children from all backgrounds could learn together. Mann's efforts were instrumental in establishing public school systems across the country. His vision of common schools for the common good laid the foundation for modern public education in America. His tireless work helped to shape the educational landscape of the nation. The Civil War ended slavery. It also brought new challenges to education. The nation faced the task of educating millions of newly freed African Americans. Reconstruction efforts included the establishment of schools for black children. However, these schools often faced discrimination and lack of funding. Despite the obstacles, African Americans saw education as a path to equality and opportunity. The post-Civil War era was a time of great change and upheaval. Yet amidst the turmoil, the belief in education as a powerful tool for social progress endured. It was a beacon of hope for a nation striving to rebuild and redefine itself. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw rapid industrialization. This had a profound impact on public education. Factories needed workers with specific skills. This led to a greater emphasis on vocational training. High schools expanded their curricula. They began offering courses in subjects like bookkeeping, typing and mechanics. The goal was to prepare students for the workforce. The industrial age also saw an influx of immigrants. Public schools played a crucial role in assimilating these newcomers into American society. They provided instruction in English and taught American values and customs. Funding public education has always been a challenge. From the early days, schools relied on a mix of local, state and federal funds. Local property taxes have traditionally been a primary source of school funding. However, reliance on property taxes has created disparities. Wealthier communities with higher property values can generate more revenue for their schools. This has led to unequal opportunities for students in less affluent areas. Federal programs such as the Elementary and Secondary Education Act have attempted to address these funding inequities. However, the debate over how to adequately and equitably fund public education continues to this day. The 20th century witnessed significant milestones in the fight for educational equality. The landmark Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court ruling in 1954 declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional. This decision was a major victory for the civil rights movement. The Brown v. Board of Education ruling paved the way for integration. It affirmed the principle that separate but equal was inherently unequal. However, the process of desegregation was long and arduous. It faced resistance and setbacks in many parts of the country. 
Despite the challenges, the Brown versus Board of Education decision stands as a testament to the power of litigation and social activism in advancing educational justice. It transformed the landscape of American education and reaffirmed the constitutional right of all children to a quality education. Section 8. The Enduring Legacy of Brown v. Board of Education The Brown v. Board of Education decision had a profound and lasting impact on American society. It helped to dismantle the legal framework of segregation. It also inspired other movements for social justice and equality. The rulings sent a clear message that separate educational facilities were inherently unequal. It sparked a nationwide movement to desegregate schools and other public spaces. The legacy of Brown v. Board of Education continues to shape education policy and practice today. It serves as a reminder of the ongoing struggle to ensure equal educational opportunities for all students, regardless of race or background. Section 9, A New Era of Equality, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. Another landmark achievement in education reform was the passage of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. This act, a key part of President Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty, aimed to improve the educational opportunities for disadvantaged children. The Elementary and Secondary Education Act provided federal funding to schools in low-income areas. It also supported programs for students with disabilities and those learning English as a second language. This landmark legislation recognized the federal government's role in ensuring educational equity. It has been reauthorized and amended several times since its inception, reflecting the evolving needs of students and the changing educational landscape. Section 10. Education, a public good, a shared responsibility. Throughout its history, American public education has been shaped by a fundamental belief. Education is a public good. This belief is rooted in the idea that an educated citizenry is essential for a thriving democracy. Public education is seen as a shared responsibility. It is funded by taxpayers and governed by elected officials. It is accountable to the public. This commitment to public education has not been without its challenges. Debates over funding, curriculum and accountability continue to shape the educational landscape. However, the fundamental principle that education is a public good remains a cornerstone of American society. Section 11. Investing in our future. The enduring power of public education. As we look to the future, public education faces new and complex challenges. Rapid technological advancements, globalization and evolving workforce demands require innovative approaches to teaching and learning. Yet, amid these challenges, the fundamental purpose of public education remains as relevant as ever to prepare young people for active citizenship, economic self-sufficiency and personal fulfillment. Public education has the power to transform lives and strengthen communities. By investing in our schools and supporting our educators, we invest in the future of our nation. The enduring legacy of American public education lies in its ability to adapt, innovate and inspire, ensuring that all students have the opportunity to reach their full potential and shape a brighter tomorrow.